Yeah, hello. My name is Gerald Palanque. Um, I live in St. Albans, Queens, New York City. Um, I'm embroiled in a custody, uh, for lack of a better word, battle with my estranged wife over the uh, access and uh, care of our child, Naeem Sadiq Palanque. Uh, he is now five years old. This first started on July 13th of 2006 uh, when he was 15 months old and she left our residence uh, to go somewhere, I don't know where, I didn't know where for three weeks. Um, and uh, she ended up living in a battered woman shelter even though there was no incidents of uh, domestic violence, no police report. And let me, um, let me preface this first of all. Domestic violence is one of the worst things that can happen to anyone. Um, it is horrible, it is disgusting, and it shouldn't be done. Now having said that, I am being falsely accused of this uh, just on my estranged wife's say so, even though I have evidence to prove to the contrary. Uh, she's being represented by a, uh, at one point, a very worthy group called Safe Horizons, the Domestic Violence Project. Only it seems now, just like with affirmative action, which was a necessary uh, implementation that had to be done to, uh, to kind of uh, bring us on an even playing field, all of we in the United States of America, um, they've gone a little bit too far like with uh, affirmative action, in the sense that uh, they are trying to have me prosecuted for domestic violence and I have never ever laid my hands on my estranged wife in any way, shape, or form. And I'll take a polygraph on that. Um, the other part is I still don't know where my son lays his head. Four years later, going into the fifth year, we just had a mistrial um, because I had to filed charges against my lawyer because paying her $250 an hour, she did not jealously, as they say, jealously defend my position. Um, and that will be taken care of with uh, uh, a board that oversees misconduct by lawyers. Why I'm on here is to say I need help from all of you who look on or watch or view YouTube. I need you please to call Governor David Patterson uh, and ask him to appoint a commission, a bipartisan one, to look at the abuses on men, and especially men of color, in the family court system, and especially the family court located on Jamaica Avenue, uh, in between Jamaica Avenue and Archer Avenue, um, in Queens. Uh, I'd also like you to call uh, Senator Malcolm Smith, who's the president pro tem of the New York State Senate, who's also my uh, senator, and I've tried to reach him, as well as Assemblywoman Barbara Clark, who's also my Assemblywoman, as well as Councilman Leroy Comrie. I have been a voter for 34 years now. I have been a district leader in my area. I've tried to get in touch with all of them, and I haven't heard anything back yet. Please call them, and please ask them to look into these abuses that are going on in family court against men who want to be with their fathers. I'd also like you to write President Obama because uh, he himself uh, grew up in a home where his father was not present. And here's my son Naeem. And you can see some characteristics that look similar to President Obama at that age when he was five. This is his first Mets game. I was blessed to take him to that my sister got us tickets for. It was a wonderful experience. And he is five years old and he is in the middle of this. This is not right. President Obama, as you wrote very, very eloquently in your book, The Audacity to Hope, and I was one of your biggest supporters. You can find that on MySpace. You wanted to be with your father. You wanted to be with your father. I want to be with my son. And in every step of the way, every juncture, I've been kept away. I've been put in a position of, uh, I have to battle just to be with my son. And I'm in my 50s. 
I'm not a young guy who just got his girlfriend pregnant. Uh, we were married. We still are. We are estranged. We're separated. Um, and part of that marriage was to also legitimize my son uh, and being in love with his mother. But this is going too far. Um, I also was uh, voluntarily put into a program which, on the advice of my lawyer, which is one of the... Uh, the uh, grievances I have with her because I always turned it down when it was presented to me before she came into uh, into the support part of this case uh, called the STEP program and in that program I received horrible statements of racism and horrible statements of ageism. One was directed to my community when this uh, caseworker named Corinne Maddie said to me why are all these people from St. Albans in this program. Well, I don't know about you, but maybe they're looking at things because we're in the worst economic time since 1929. Maybe they believe that they could help them to find some employment. But that is no reflection on their community. There are millions of United States citizens who were in that position also. Also, she also told me when I was a counselor, and I said I was a counselor in 1978, I worked for Boys Harbor, Inc., and at that time, alcohol was not considered the drug it is now. And she also said, wow, that's really a long time ago. You're really old. So I was hit with racism and ageism, and it was horrible. And this was voluntary. This was not ordered as of this point. I have a support magistrate who said some horrible, terrible things to me. Uh, he told me point blank on March 2nd of this year that it didn't matter how articulate I am or how intellectual I may seem. The other shoe that would have dropped on that because I have family in both communities of the African American community and the Latino community for an N word or an S word. This is horrible. I have never experienced this in my life. I have no criminal record. I have never ever laid my hands on any woman in violence at all. I need your help. Please help me. Please call Governor Patterson at 518-454, I'm reading now, 474, excuse me, 474-8390. I don't have the numbers for Senator Clark, but you can Google them up. Assemblywoman Clark and Senator Smith, you can Google them up as well as Councilman Comrie. I need your help, please. It's getting down to crunch time and I need your help. I have run out of money. My funds have been depleted fighting this case for the past four years, paying a lawyer $250 an hour. This is ridiculous. This is wrong. This is horrible. This is not the United States of America with a constitution where somebody is innocent until proven guilty. I have been accused of something and I've been treated like I have committed a crime. Also, my son was exchanged in a precinct for two years and two months, which is against the longevity of an order of protection, especially when no one is violent. He has been exchanged in a precinct. He's no longer exchanged by the grace of God. He has been exchanged in a precinct longer than most criminals and I come from a family of law enforcement officers. My father was a first, degree, first grade detective, 1950. My uncle, 1941. My mother's brother, first grade detective inspector in the Metro Police Department in Washington, D.C. in 1939. In a segregated city, which shows you the foundation of my family. I need your help. Thank you very much for listening.